hello guys in this video we are going to talk about linear discriminant functions so basically with this topic now we are slowly going to enter into neural networks the artificial neural networks so this is the basics for uh, entering into these kinds of topics so previously we have seen the bayesian decision rule we have seen seen gmm we have seen k means we have seen non parametric methods so in all these kinds of methods what we used to do is we used to assume a probability density function for all the classes so we would say assume a gaussian distribution along this class or a and a gaussian distribution along this class and then find the probability of other points in the space with respect to the classes and whatever probability is greater we assign that class this is what we used to do do we have done in the previous videos right so now here the concept is a bit different here for neural networks and for all these kinds of topics what we do is we don't assume any probability distribution for any of the classes what we say is just give me a line that will separate both of these classes that's all we just need a line we don't need any probability distribution functions no parameters nothing uh, we will have parameters but no parameters for the probability di distribution function just give me a line which will separate both of these classes so uh, here i know that i just have two classes so either it will be this or this for multiple class we will see in uh, our next videos but for now we will just taking two class and that too we are just taking linearly separable classes we are not talking about uh, classes which are having non linear data so a class can be something like this say this is one class this is one class and this is other class so we are not going to talk about these classes in this video so for basics we will start with a linearly separable class where you can see that both of these classes can be separated by just one line so that is what we mean by linearly separable class so and this is the data that we have suppose so this is some feature 1 and feature 2 if you see uh, normally we use these notations that say uh, feature 1 is the size of the sunflower that we used to talk about and this is the luminance so this can be any feature but for now we can uh, choose this so this is our purpose we just need a line which will separate both of these things so now what we have to do is we have to just find the equation of this line and our problem is solved if we know the equation of the line we can know if a point is over here it is on this side of the line so it should belong to this class and if a point is over here it is on this side of this line so it should belong to this class that is all that we are going to say so let us see how can we mathematically formulate this problem that we need just one line and if a test sample is on this side of the line it belongs to this class and if a test sample is this side of the line and it belongs to this class this is all that we are going to see so these classes can be separated by just one line so this is only true for linearly separable classes which we are taking now and for higher dimensions it can be separated by some hyperplane so now suppose that this is a three dimensional uh, data this has three axes then it could be separated by a plane so this can be sort of a plane and you can separate this like this so for a higher dimensional data Uh, for a, a dimensional data which is greater than three, four, five, six dimensions, we call it a hyperplane. So for three dimension it is a plane, and for higher dimensional it is a hyperplane. So let us visualize what happens for a two D case because we can visualize two D very nicely. So let us take a two D feature space like this. so the line a line in 2d space can be written like this omega 1 x1 or w1 x1 plus w2 x2 
plus w naught is equal to zero. So I guess you might not be familiar with this equation of line. So what I've done is I have done some manipulation that is some algebra. So I have kept x two over here and I've uh, basically transferred both of them over here and uh, taken this w two down. So I get this equation. Now you can see this is of the form y is equal to m x plus c, and this is the form that we all know. We all recognize this form. The line equation in two D two D plane is just y is equal to m x plus c. So this is nothing but the same thing. So instead of uh, writing this like this, I'm going to write it like this because it gives me some uh, some special things. We'll see that. So this is the equation of the line. So this is the line that I have to find out. Okay. So for a d-dimensional space, now this was true for only two-dimensional space. For a d-dimensional space, uh, the hyperplane equation will be. So this was a two-dimensional, hence it was line. Now for three-dimensional, it will be plane. For multiple dimensions, it will be a hyperplane. So that equation of that hyperplane will be. It is basically w naught plus w one x one plus w two x two to w d x d. So you can see it is just an extension of this. Here there was w naught w one x one plus w two x two, because this was just two dimensional, so it stopped at two. Now there are multiple dimensions, so there are going to be say d dimensions, so it will stop at d. That's it. So I can basically write this as a summation like this, where uh, w i's are nothing but w one, w two up till w three, and uh, x i's are x one, x two, and x d. That is what I can do. And this you can see we can simplify into a matrix. So this is this is the matrix over here, and this is the other matrix. So I can write all these uh, all these. So we call these as weights because it is just a way. It is these are all scalars. These are all some constants, some numbers which will get multiplied to the given input. So these x one, x two are nothing but our input, our data, the features. So x one over so your small x one will denote size. Okay, let me just change the notation a little bit. So these are small x one, small x two, etc. So this will be a input sort of thing, input matrix, and this will be a weight matrix which will be constant. So this uh, this will change for training and will be constant for test. That is what I'm. So we'll see how we calculate these uh, weights and all. But uh, for now, let us just uh, see how can we differentiate both the two classes. So here we have the uh, weight weight uh, vector that we can see over here. So it is just but uh, omega one, omega two, omega three up till omega d. I have just put them all into a vector, and you can see omega naught does not have any x. So it is just multiplied by one basically. So here because of that I am just adding a one over here so that I could also add this into the uh, matrix. So If you see, when I multiply both of these matrix, I will get omega naught into one plus omega one into x one plus omega two into x two dot 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 omega d into x d. That is precisely the equation that I have. So we can represent this into a matrix because uh, after all, we are going to pro program this uh, thing. We are not going to solve it by our hand. So. Uh, we have lot of algorithms for matrix multiplications and so on so this becomes easier for us so this can be just simplified into a simple vector equation which is some omega transpose so this is omega transpose and this is x that is what so it is a convention that we take column vectors mostly so because this is a row vector so we are denoting it as omega transpose Okay, so now let us take an example on how what can be the weight vectors in all all sorts of things. So suppose that I have a line over here, which is x two min plus x one minus one is equal to zero. 
सो हियर यू कैन सी दैट ओमेगा नॉट इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन ओमेगा वन इज इक्वल टू वन एंड ओमेगा टू इज ऑल्सो वन सो आई हैव रिटर्न ओमेगा नॉट ओमेगा वन ओमेगा टू ओवर हियर सिंस इट इज अ टू डायमेंशनल स्पेस इट विल स्टॉप एट टू इट इज स्टॉपिंग एट टू एंड ओवर हियर दिस इज द इनपुट दैट इज वन एक्स वन एक्स टू सो वन इज बिकॉज ओमेगा नॉट इज जस्ट मल्टीप्लाइड बाय वन सो दिस ओमेगा नॉट विल बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय वन एंड अदर्स आर जस्ट दी स्केलर सो दीज आर वन फॉर दिस so let us see how can we plot this line so if you if you want to plot this line what you can do is so this is just for uh, visualization sake so you can put x1 is equal to 0 suppose so when x1 is 0 you get x2 is equal to 1 so you will put this one over here and you get x2 is equal to 1 so you get a point over here if say x1 is 0 so x1 is 0 over here And x two is one, so this can be a point which is zero uh, comma one. Similarly, if I put x two is equal to zero, I get x one is equal to one. So this is the point one comma zero, and I can draw a line over here. Right. So this can be uh, assumed. as the line that we want suppose so suppose that somebody gives you this weight vectors we are now just visualizing how can we separate both of these two classes how can we know that uh, if a class is if a point is over here the, i'm talking about the test uh, test case basically so if the uh, test uh, sample is over here then how can we know that it belongs to this class and if it is sample is over here it belongs to this class so we have formulated a problem like this now if you consider any point over here say let me consider a point that is 1 comma 1 so i am considering a point over here which is on say the right side of the line that is 1 comma 1 and let us let us try to put this over here and see what we get so if so i am going to put this over here basically so if i just put 1 1 in place of x1 and x2 here x1 and x2 let us see what happens so 1 plus 1 minus 1 is equal to so now this won't be equal to 0 this will be equal to some say g of x that is what i have written over here because this was equal to 0 only for the points that are on the line so for the points that are on the line this will be 0 but for other points that are not on this line the equation will be something the the value will be something else right so here i have these two will cancel so i have g of x is equal to 1 so you can see that i got some some value over here now say i consider one more point which is on the left side of this plane so if i consider this point say 0 comma 0 so when i put x1 is equal to 0 x2 is equal to 0 in this equation let us see what we get so x2 is equal to 0 plus x1 is 0 minus 1 is equal to say some g of x so here we can see g of x is negative so this tells you that if a point is on this half of the line if any point is on this half of the line g of x will be positive this is what it tells you if a point is on this side of the line if any point is on this side of the line then g of x will be negative so we can uh, name this as the positive half of the line and we can name this as a negative half of the line so now you can see that if suppose somebody gives you this line so you have this equation instead of equating it to zero just equate it to some g of x so basically i am making a function g of x is equal to x2 plus x1 minus 1 so i am making some function g of x 
and if a point is on this side the value will be positive because this will be the positive half of this line and if a sample is on this half the value will be negative of g of x the value will be negative so over here you will get the negative half of this line now you you can very clearly see that if we get a test sample and we put it in this g of x so our actual g of x for a n dimensional space will be like this so these this this is the weight matrix and this is the inputs that we have so if we give one input that is suppose over here so i'll put the x1 and x2 value of this particular thing uh, here in this equation and i will find the value of g of x if it is positive then i will say it belongs to this class if this is negative then i'll say it belongs to this class so this is precisely what we are going to do in uh, the further upcoming lectures so this is what we call the linear discriminant function so these are all linears these are just lines or planes so these are linears and discriminant because they are discriminating between two uh, regions or two classes basically so here there is one region there is this, this other region so they are discriminating between the two regions and that is because uh, the name is uh, linear discriminant functions so i hope you have understand this particular thing this was very important because the whole neural networks and perceptron training etc depends on this uh, whole principle that if a point is on one side of the line the g of x for that line will be positive and if it lies on the other side of the line the g of x will be negative so that's all for this video we will uh, see the perceptron training rule in the next video and thank you so much for watching thank you